Hi everyone and welcome to November's Comfort Book Club discussion of Wintering by Catherine May. I'm joined by my mum Donna today. Hello everyone. And we're really looking forward to chatting about the book. We've got our cups of tea at the ready. Yeah. And I highly recommend making yourself a warming drink before settling down to listen to our discussion. We've gone for our two Robin mugs. I loved that a Robin got a shout out in wintering. I love the story about the wintering Robins. Yeah, that was lovely. And we haven't had any time to bake this week, but we did get some store-bought stolen. (laughs) Which, very nice idea. Very nice, yeah. Yeah. Mm. I love stock. I love marzipan. Mm. Mm. Me too. Mm. Lovely festive winter treat. Mm-hmm. And to have that with a cup of tea is really lovely. Mm. <laughs> but before we dive straight into the discussion, I do just have a little housekeeping to do. Thank you so much to everyone who sent in a voice message to add to our discussion this month. Your messages are always so appreciated, but I do want to remind everyone that I ask for messages that are 45 seconds or less. I don't mind if they overrun this a bit, and I intentionally set quite a short time because people always do overrun. Um, (laughs) But the messages lately have been getting longer and longer and longer. I had to cut one down this week that was well over two minutes, and I would just really appreciate it if you would all have a think about your recording length in the future because we always want to be able to fit in everyone's message. But anyway, on to the discussion of wintering. So this was a reread for me. I think it was for you as well. It was. And it was really interesting to return to this book. We both read it before the pandemic. Yes. It came out very shortly before it. Yes, it it really did. Maybe the autumn or or the January before. Yeah, I I can't remember remember exactly, but I remember I interviewed Catherine May about it in February 2020. And they were just starting to be a few kind of like newspaper headlines, but like hardly anything. And little did we know, as you say, the collective wintering. Yes. Absolutely. That we would all go through after this and um, what a timely book in some ways this really was. Yes, indeed. But it was very interesting to return to it kind of over two years on. Yes. Um, it was really, I think, um, even more sort of touching in some ways. I found it more poignant in yeah. some ways too. Yeah, I think um, so. Yeah. yeah. But it's definitely a book that makes you reflect on your own personal winters. Uh, Catherine May describes wintering as a time when you might feel a bit out in the cold. Yes, absolutely. Um, And I love the way it's very comforting. She makes sure that we understand that everyone winters. It's not just you and it's not just once. You have these periods in your life when that's yes. inevitable. So some periods that are especially difficult mm. when you feel maybe a bit out of step or you're going through hard times either yeah. through health or whatever reason. Yeah. Um, but that everyone experiences this yes. and it's you should think about it in a cyclical way yes. that you go through good times, you also go through not such good times and that's just a part of life just as winter is a part of the seasons a part of the year over and over again and I love that she draws on the idea that it's the time of rest of recuperation getting yourself sorted enabling yourself to go on and find spring and be ready for it exactly but it's important to be gentle with yourself very gentle um, when when Mm -hmm. you're going through a wintering But this book made one of our Comfort Book Club readers, Jason in New Zealand, reflect on his own personal wintering. And he sent in a message about that. So let's listen to Jason's message. Hello, this is Jason from New Zealand. Some books come into our lives when we need them most. And Catherine May's memoir, Wintering, gives meaning to my own personal winter. Having worked in a university setting for several decades, my wintering arrived suddenly in 2021, 
when I was so burnt out that I no longer had any energy to keep up with the unrelenting pressures of academia. To borrow Catherine's reference to Philip Pullman's mythology in Northern Lights, my burnout was like the link between me and the external manifestation of who I am inside had been severed. So I had to undergo a kind of wintering where I had to slow down, read more for comfort, thank you Comfort Book Club, and let my spare time expand, all of which are essential for self-care but still regarded as radical acts in the business world of academia. I appreciated Catherine's reflection about how the well-meaning messages of positivity that we see around us might sometimes generate more anxiety because the implicit message is that wintering is not an option. I like that Catherine instead meditates on the natural and fictional worlds, from the wintertime habits of bees to the hibernating moments, to show that our darkest moments of retreat can be a time for reflection, for slow replenishment, for putting our houses in order. I also love the unexpected moments of humour, like when Catherine faints, collapses on the sauna floor and croaks for water, only to have the person next door say, um, is it absolutely necessary? Only I'm in the middle of getting dressed. Miranda and Donna, thank you both for recommending this thoughtful and exquisitely written memoir. Oh, thank you, Jason. Yes, I laughed so hard about the sauna. I did too. Thank passage. you for sharing well. that too, Jason. Yeah. Yes, I know. I think Catherine May spoke about the stress, the stress of academia, of academia as and well. And how many teachers do we know who've burnt out? And, oh, exactly. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I certainly went through my own personal wintering yeah. when I was um, a primary school teacher, yeah. and yes teachers in general are under so much pressure. Um, what I found really interesting is the mix of genres that there is in Absolutely. wintering. It, it isn't just a typical self-help book at all, I would say. No, not at all. And in fact, when I interviewed Catherine and brought that up, yeah. she said that what she'd been interested in was writing a kind of self-help book, but but for people who hate self-help books, <laughs> well, she generally, that, I think. yes, yeah. I think so. Yeah, and she didn't set out for this to really be a self-help book, but she wanted the book to kind of go on a journey with yes. its readers, and yes. I think it really does. It that. does. It does. And I love the blend of memoir with beautiful nature writing, mm -hmm. with the sort of self-help, and also she takes quite a scientific. Uh, viewpoint often too. She examines the science of winter. I agree with that. And she also adds in this delicious humour. And one of my favourite bits is the same as Jason's, but it's also when she says that when she struggled to get her bra and knickers on, she, afterwards she realised it was an act of heroism. Yes. <laughs> when all these men turn up yes. and women with yes. <laughs> defibrillators at the ready, yeah. I think. Yes. And she said she was never setting foot in that gym again. Yes. Yes. <laughs> We all, we all can understand yeah, that one. Yes. With that. Yeah, I feel exactly the same about saunas. The number of times I've tried to sort of think, oh, I'm going to be all, you know, scandy. <laughs> Get in the sauna. No, and, it wouldn't work. And no, I just, I feel awful. Yes. <laughs> so yes. I thoroughly yes. sympathise with that in that bit. Mind you, I don't imagine the winter sea um, swimming would suit you either. No, I know. Yeah. <laughs> she's, yeah. she's generally she's hardier than, yes. than I am, for sure. <laughs> Um, but another reader, Gina from the USA, wrote about how much she too loved Catherine's beautiful writing. I think her, her nature yeah. writing really sort of stands out in this. And Gina also said that she loved how Catherine examines both the physical wintering and the metaphorical wintering. Yes. Uh, so let's hear Gina's message. Hello, Miranda and Donna. This is Gina. I'm calling in from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania in the States. Wow, I absolutely loved Wintering by Catherine May. Thank you. Her writing was just so beautiful and moving. Absolutely lovely. I particularly enjoyed how she played with both the literal and sort of metaphorical sense of Wintering, talking literally about the season of winter, as well as sort of winter as a metaphor for the difficult times in our life. 
and how those difficult times, really, the knowledge that we gain is meant to be shared. She says that in your winter and once it's over, it's your responsibility to pass it on. And in return, it's our responsibility to listen to those who have wintered before us. It's an exchange of gifts in which nobody loses out. That was just absolutely stunning and so truthful and something that I hope that I can live by in the future. Once again, thank you for this recommendation. I absolutely loved it. Oh, thank you, Gina. Yeah, thank you so much. That was lovely. Yes, really lovely message. Yeah. And I so agree. I think that was a very moving part of the book and a very much a part of Catherine May's message as a whole. She interviews so many people who have gone through their own winters yeah. in the book and who share their stories of overcoming hardship. Yes. And she very deliberately makes that point that you're you're meant to share your hard stories as well as your good ones. Yes. And you're meant to try to learn lessons from hard times in life that you can then pass on to others in the hope of helping them through a difficult time and as well. you have the obligation when someone's telling you to really listen and mm -hmm. try to understand yeah. their lessons of wisdom. And I think that's so important too. Yes, exactly. It's a two-way process and she brings that out beautifully. Yes, she really yeah. does. I really enjoyed all of the interviews that yes. she sort of scattered through the book. Um, and another reader, Vanessa from the Czech Republic, sent a message about her favorite moment in the book was when Catherine May discusses one of the Aesop fables about the ants and the, gra and the grasshopper. And I really liked this as well. And through telling this fable, she talks about how important it is um, to not take a kind of holier than thou attitude Absolutely. to Which, others. Of course, so many people almost instinctively think, oh, I wouldn't have to go through that, or I would do it differently. Yes, or, or you know, yes. I, I would be better prepared, yes. so I won't have that problem, or yeah. you know, nothing bad will happen to me. Um, but let's hear Vanessa's message about this fable. Hello, Miranda. Hello, Donna. Hello, all fellow readers. I'm Vanessa from the Czech Republic. My favorite part of wintering was when, referring to Aesop's fable of the ant and the grasshopper, the author writes that it always struck her that the ants had missed an opportunity to make a productive trade. The entertainment of a singing grasshopper while they worked, in return for a small amount of food in the winter. Oh, thank you, Vanessa. Thank you, Vanessa. Lovely to hear from a reader in the Czech Republic Absolutely. this month. That's wonderful. And yes, um, I think that I, I liked that point that she made too, that there could have been a trade. Absolutely. I thought that was We've really all well got done. the same talents. Yes. No, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And I, I really thought it was a great strength of the book, how much she stresses, um, how that we all need to be kind and tolerant of yes. each other. Yes. And you don't always know what someone else is going through. Um, but like you said too, the importance of listening yeah. um, to others and yeah. having a tolerant and kind attitude can make such a huge difference. It can, it can. Having been someone who through health has gone through quite a long winter at part times in my life, yeah. I, um, I really appreciated those who just listened mm. and were kind and caring. And I think that's not always appreciated how much it doesn't even have to be practical. It's the kindness of the ability to listen. Yes, yeah, yeah that's so true. And give you some words of wisdom, because sometimes that's lovely to hear as well. Yes. Yeah. Um, but something I thoroughly enjoyed about wintering as well were all the literary allusions. Oh, so did I. Absolutely loved them. It was tick, 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 tick wasn't <laughs> yes. it? Yeah. And I'd remember there being a whole bit about Christmas books in the book, which there isn't actually. She no. has a bit on ghost stories. But 
she references so many mm-hmm. Christmas books yes, in it. She does. A lot of my favourites, like yeah. The Box of Delights and The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe, yeah. Yeah. Um, The Children of Green No. Absolutely. You know, uh, but, and so many other great winter yeah. ones too, like the Joan Aiken books yes, and the Philip Pullman yes. ones. So I think that's what I'd remembered. And I just love that she has this love for children's books yeah, she too. Does too. And that comes out in the book as yeah. well. And I think reading this makes you want to go off and read all these other great winter stories. Yeah, well, I've always thought snow is best in books rather than in reality. I really <laughs> identify with the people who, the, 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 um, the one with her niece who was visiting from, from Finland. Finland. Yes, where they she get was, too yes, much snow. Too much snow. And having lived in Canada in the winter in the prairies, and having severe frostbite on my hands, I, I, I'm, I'm with it's a nuisance. <laughs> you, you like snow in literature. I like it in literature and maybe just for, you know, a bit like Camelot, just a dusting outside for a day or two and yes. then I've had enough, which I think is like my, my, my level of tolerance for cold, cold, cold. Yes. yes. Um, but another reader, Victoria from the USA, also spoke about how well read she thought Catherine May is and she enjoyed a lot of the literary allusions as well in the book so let's hear Victoria's message. Hi Miranda, Donna and other Comfort Book Club members. This is Victoria in Santa Barbara. I was impressed by May's honesty and her eagerness to learn lessons from the natural world and from literature and myth. She is very well read, and her quotes and observations are so perceptive that I had to restrain myself from highlighting my library book. The book is full of interesting references to research on sleep, seasonal celebrations, natural phenomena, and animal behavior. I especially loved the story of the hibernation of the humble dormouse. I immediately remembered one of my favorite poems, The Dormouse and the Doctor by A. A. Milne, and rushed to reread it. I identified with her experience of the solace of pre-dawn hours spent alone, and her appreciation of comforting repetitive activities made me take up my knitting with renewed enthusiasm. Here in Santa Barbara, we don't have a traditional winter, But May's book renewed my appreciation of our unique Southern California winter, the shorter days, the bright orange persimmons and flame red liquid amber trees, and a certain slant of light that highlights the mountains in new ways and causes long shadows. At one point, May plunges into the ocean to cure her depression. The process works for her, And I do sometimes suffer from depression, but I'm not ready to skinny dip in the Pacific Ocean. Thanks again for the Comfort Book Club. I'm ready to move on to the next read. Bye-bye. Oh, thank you, Victoria. Thank you, Victoria. <laughs> and the Pacific is very cold. Yes. I don't want to get into it either. <laughs> Even in Not Santa at any Barbara. time of year. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think any... No, no, I agree. Uh, yes, I would not want to... Uh, skinny dip myself I wouldn't at want all. to do it down in, in um, w- Whitstable either no. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest I think it'd be very cold I, I forget what she gave us the temperatures and you just think oh I can't even bear yeah. a really cold shower <laughs> no I know <laughs> I know I once tried to sort of take like cold showers in the morning that like you're from meant your to you know and, yes yeah. and uh, no that didn't last <laughs> beyond the first morning <laughs> <laughs> well, it works for some of us anyway. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And I yeah. really admire how she swims every day of the yeah. year. I think that's amazing. Um, but I don't think I could do it myself. But I really enjoyed hearing from people about some of the passages from the book that particularly spoke to them, but also some of Catherine May's um tactics as well yes and Madeline in France sent in a message about uh, how after reading Wintering she's approaching some of the 
sleepless times when she lies awake at night a bit differently and how the book has really helped her with that and it's been the same for me actually yeah. I often lie awake at night um, for quite long periods of time I've never been a very good sleeper she wasn't no <laughs> <laughs> terrible baby you didn't do yes. anything like the book said <laughs> you, you always remind me yes, yes. <laughs> your many sleepless <laughs> nights when I was when I was now young. I feel guilty because I sleep really soundly <laughs> yeah, like, but that's such a blessing it that's is. so good it is um but now I do try more to just read at night and things like that when I'm awake and I was interested that Madeline uh, felt similarly after reading Wintering so let's hear Madeline from France's message hi Miranda hi Dana and all the members of the Comfort Book Club I am Madeleine, a French widow from Caen in Normandy. Wintering, it's not the kind of book I often read, but I am a winter's lover and so I was attracted by this title. Chapter by chapter, month by month, you enter deeper and deeper in winter and you discover what it means in different cultures, how it works for nature, but also how winter can heal you. This book offers me new perspectives. Catherine May explained, for example, that life works in cycles, not in a linear time, so we can improve our skills and attitude season after season. I was surprised by bees gathering in winter to protect the hive and pleased by the magical power of light during the St. Lucy celebration in Sweden too. But for me, the most practical point was a view of the long winter's nights. In the past, people used to deal with it by sleeping at the beginning, doing a lot of different things in the middle, and sleeping again at the end of the night. Since I read this and consider it normal, I cope better with my wakings at night and go back to sleep more easily. Wintering, it's a real bunch of hope, humanity and joy. Thank you so much, Miranda, for this clever choice. Oh, thank you, Madeleine. Uh, that was a wonderful message. Thank you so much. I, I really enjoyed hearing your thoughts there, Madeleine, too. Yes, and I'm so glad that reading Wintering is helping you with some of your insomnia, just like it is me. Yeah. Um, I took some of that advice myself. But also, like you, Madeleine, I really enjoyed how Catherine May examined what winter means in different cultures all around the world. Wasn't that fascinating? Really fascinating. Yeah, yeah I, I loved it. I thought that was so well done. And I think one of the reasons why I love this book so much too is it's such a celebration of a season that is often quite a difficult season yes. for many people. I think people can maybe feel isolated in winter. Mm. Um, definitely down a bit, you know, yes, with the, yeah. the lack of light yeah. and everything. It can really be a hard month yeah. for many. And I like winter, but it's not my favourite month. But ever since reading Wintering for the first, not my favourite season, season. Yes. <laughs> but ever since reading Wintering for the first time, yeah. I have learned to appreciate it more and I think Catherine May does that so well. She, she really celebrates the beauty and the goodness that you can find in winter. And, and how it gives this natural cycle of rest and recuperation. Yes. Month by month too, she nuances it so well, I think, in yes. her writing. And yeah, I so agree. Yeah. And what I really took from this book too is... For Catherine May, she loves winter. This is yeah. a real celebration of winter. But what I really took from it was a way of looking at every season in the year yes. and really celebrating each season and myself um, trying to discover some of the high points of every season. Seasonal living is so important it, to, both to both of, of us. us. And I think we've always had it, but we've become more and more aware that that's the way we live. Yes, exactly. Um, especially since we've moved to the country. Yes, it yeah. makes a real difference, actually. Yeah. But I love, too, how Catherine May has developed some of her own rituals to really mm. recognise and mark 
these little shifts that occur all through a season. Um, that was very inspiring too. I love how she marks the turning of the year, just yes. the day after the, the winter solstice. Yes, I love that. Yes, yes. I love that yes. too. And I I'm find watching that watching the sunrise at this time yes. of year too mm. and still seeing the light. And I, I, I love so much of what she discussed. Exactly. Yeah. And another reader, Antoinette from Canada, uh, sent a message about how she can find winters hard, which I mean, yes. you understand. She's having, in Ontario, I can't remember what we'll, we'll yeah, listen. Toronto, Toronto, I think. Yes, Ontario. Yeah, Toronto, yeah. Ontario. Exactly. So, so you yeah, understand those winters. I do. Very well. And they, they can be hard. Um, but that she said reading wintering was like a tonic, which was lovely. Mm. So let's hear Antoinette's message. Hello, Miranda and Donna. My name is Antoinette, and I'm one of your readers from Toronto, Canada. As someone who lives with long and cold winters, I found this book rather a tonic. A passage that I particularly loved was on page 210. Winter is a time for libraries, the muffled quiet of book stacks, and the scent of old pages and dust. I love that it brought up the idea that we can escape, that it suspends time in the pursuit of our pleasures, whether that be domestic or personal. And isn't that so precious in our ever-changing world where so much is focused on pursuit of happiness via monetary gain or ambitious ones? This will be a book I'll be returning to you time and again. Oh, thank you, Antoinette. Thank you, Antoinette. Yes, and but, I do sympathise with those. Um, you know, the snow comes. It's in the snow belt, I think, mm. Toronto. And I just remember very long winters. Very long winters. Yes. yes. Um, but yes, I I, I love that uh, passage that you shared, and I think something Catherine May wrote about in the book was what she called quiet pleasures, yes. or something like that. Yeah. Is how she described it, which I thought was lovely and that winter is really a season for quiet pleasures yeah. like going yeah. to a library like reading a good book or yeah. knitting or making soup lighting a candle too yes you know? exactly yes, yes. Um, going for a walk yeah, all absolutely. of these little quiet pleasures um, are really enhanced by winter in yeah. a way I and I thought that was such a lovely message to take yeah. from the book as well but I've really enjoyed this discussion Me today. Too. And thank you again for everyone who contributed their thoughts through a voice message. And I'm looking forward to hearing what all our readers thought about the book. Um, do remember that December's choice is a lovely Christmas children's book. I think Catherine May would approve. Yeah. Um, it's The Van Der Beekers of 141st Street, which I think is a real modern classic of children's literature and a lovely Christmas read. Yeah. So December's choice is this one, which I'm looking forward to. The discussion will be a lot earlier in December, yeah. so do check the link information about the Comfort Book Club. You need to get some rest and recuperation over Christmas. I'm saying to you, you've got to take a break. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, I'm looking forward to a Christmas break. So yeah, yeah be an earlier discussion date in, in December so we can have some time off. <laughs> um, but yes, I hope you all have a wonderful weekend ahead. Thank yeah. you so much to everyone who's been pressing the super thanks button on my videos recently. I so appreciate yeah, it. Thank you so much. Um, but of course, we appreciate everyone who watches and comments and likes the videos. Yeah. So thank you to all of you for your support. And I hope you have a lovely weekend ahead. Goodbye. Bye-bye.